Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, today we're doing something a little bit different. We're in a new locale, we're getting creative because mama does not have time to film all of these motherfucking Vlogmas videos. So I have to get super creative now. I am doing my nighttime skincare routine while chit-chatting with you guys, okay? So I think I have some tea boiling. I'm gonna go check on that and I will be right back. On a reusable cotton pad, I'm gonna use my nice and my toner. As you guys know, I love this toner. I love it because it has brightening agents, it has licorice root, it has um, vitamin C, what else does it have? Niacinamide. So it's like restoring, but also active. It's like super gentle and active. That is what I like. I like things that are really active. I'm sorry, really corrective, but not active. And that is basically what this toner is. But also it's like, I have just really been obsessed with toning because I just see such a difference. You know, if you don't wear makeup, then maybe you don't need to do this, but I do wear makeup. Um, and I just find that when I do this, I still always have leftover makeup. And I also love that you can take this nice and my toner all the way down the neck because like it's very gentle. It's just so good for brightening. And then when you use it on this reusable cotton pad, it's like so easy to like get every single area that you want to get, you know? All right. Um, also, I cleansed with these. This is new. Actually, I used to use this a while ago. This is the Rice Bright Cleanser. Is that what it's called? Rice Water Bright Cleanser. It's an oil cleanser and it's really good. It's probably my favorite texture of an oil cleanser is this, very close to this. And then I'm using the Calm and Restore. I'm still repairing my barrier from last week when I got a chemical peel, but it's better, but I'm still being super gentle. This Biosance Peptide Eye Gel. I used this yesterday and this morning and, oh my God, it's so good. It's so good. It's like the perfect texture. It has, I believe it has niacinamide. I don't remember now, but I do know I love it. These are my first impressions, by the way. So I put this all around my eye, and I'm also gonna layer with another one too, but. Okay, I'm using my peptide serum because I want that boost of hydration and plumpness. I like how I write on the bottle, write, or I mean, use three to five drops, and I literally use like five syringes of it. <laughs> but I just like love it and it's so gentle and hydrating and non-stripping. While my skin is still a little bit damp, I'm gonna apply my moisturizer. I'm using the, I'll show you after. I'm using the SkinCeuticals, uh, what's it called? Triple Lipid Restore. Triple Lipid Restore. It's like very expensive. I don't even know how much it is, but it's legit amazing. And it does smell like a spa pretty much. So you know how I feel about that, but I said I'd try it and I actually like it and kind of I'm obsessed with it. Despite, despite all of that, I am kind of obsessed with it. I'm not gonna lie. Like, it's so good. It's so good. It's the only moisturizer that I put on wet skin that turns matte immediately because the lipid content is so high. Like, it's insane. I do wish it was fragrance free. Obviously, obviously it'd be better if it was fragrance free, but whatever. Okay, this is the Aven Retinol Eye Cream. This contains retinol de high. What the hell does it contain? I don't remember. Retinaldehyde? I don't remember. Sorry, I'm a bad blogger, really. But anyways, it contains a type of retinol that's like one, 
one generation down or one conversion down from retinoic acid, which is the most potent type of retinol. So it's better than a lot of over-the-counter retinols on the market and it's formulated for the eye area. So I got that like the moment I heard about it, but oh man, it's so burning. Something is burning the shit out of me. But let me zoom you in. See if you, is it even red? It doesn't look red. Um, but yeah, fragrance is unnecessary with this cream. You can see a little redness right there. God knows what it is, but I'm telling you, it's burning a little bit. Um, if I had to guess, I would say it's the combination of the fact that I waited like 10 minutes after I dried my skin off because I was bringing all my products up here and then your skin gets really dry. And then I used this nice cinnamide toner on top of that and it is a little stripping because it has like the vitamin C in it so it could be a little bit active. So combining that with the fragrance, I don't know, that's my guess but I don't really know but this cream is so good and I've been using it like it didn't burn any other time I put it on. That's why I know it's like a combination of products. Like I used it last night and this morning and no burning whatsoever. I actually put it directly on wet skin. I am like hesitant to say this because this has fragrance but it might be like the best cream I've ever used but you know we gotta we gotta hold out we gotta hold out on that opinion because I just want to see how it does over time but the way that my skin looks the texture when I use this of my skin is unreal yes that cream is insane Let's actually see how much it is. It's not that bad. I'm not gonna lie. I literally thought it was gonna be way more. <gasps> it's not that bad. 128. Girl. For almost two ounces, 1.6 ounces. That's not like bigger. That's like a standard size. Okay, I also just put an olive oil mask in my hair because I have not done that in so long. So you can see I completely coated my hair with olive oil. Honestly, it makes your hair so healthy. It makes your hair feel so healthy. Thicker, better ends, a little bit bouncier. Um, and actually I used to do this on my face too until, well, it went viral this week. I had no idea it was so bad for your skin. I mean, I feel like people get a little dramatic, but apparently it is drying. It is drying to your skin, but actually, anecdotally, a lot of people say they like it. And I don't do this that often, actually. I do a coconut or olive oil mask like once every couple months, but every week I do an Olaplex. That is like my shit. I have so much work to do because I want to come out with three, two more products. I'd like to launch two more products mid-Feb and then two more products in spring. And that is what I'm planning for right now. And I'm so behind on that process of deciding which products to go with next. I am stuck on that pro process. I'm stuck on that process of deciding what product's going to come next because it requires an insane amount of work. Insane amount of work to validate that all of the products you want to sell they have enough sales volume and not too much competition. You know, you want to weigh those things before you decide to sell something. So I have to balance like doing what I know already works by looking at like what is selling and then creating and innovating what I want to create for like, you know, my products. Like it's such a delicate balance of trying to do what you're passionate about and do what's logical. You know, like when I launch products, I actually make sure there's enough sales volume. And so that is kind of the process that I'm stuck on right now. So it's a delicate balance of those two things. Like 
ooh, I wanna create this, this, and this, and this, and I have all these ideas, but then wait. Yes, I'm excited about that, but is it gonna be able to sell on Amazon? Is the sales, is the sales volume there? Is the demand there? And is the competition moderate? I have to look at those numbers. I have to look at like that before I decide to move forward with a product because like I'm not gonna take that risk of wondering is this gonna sell well or not like I need to fucking know for a fact like when I when I select a product to sell I already know pretty much for a fact that it will sell that's how much research that I do in advance what I want to create may not be in demand and that's the biggest flaw with like people starting a business they want to create something that they think the market is going to love, that they think like they're excited about and passionate about. And they think it'd be cool or different. And like most of the time, no one really cares about your idea. No one fucking cares about your idea. You need to look at what the customer wants and then you can tweak it a little bit you know like that is the mod that's the balance between the emotion and the passion and like the logic of creating products now i just have to accept it it's going to take time i may not launch two more products in february it may be it may be april it may be spring it may be a full spring collection because i need to take my time and do it the right way and then i i mean who knows who knows? Who the fuck knows, bitch? But I doubt it's going to be mid-Feb because now that I'm just like going through this in my head and like looking at the amount of work that needs to be done, it's significant. So I have to go back to work now. It's 9.30. I'm going to try to work for like another hour, but then I'm just going to wake up super early and make sure to work all morning, obviously. But like I have to film tomorrow too because I'm going to be out of town for like three days. Well, I think I'm going to go now. And don't forget to subscribe and follow me on social media if you would like. All of those links are below. And I will see you guys in my next video.